My freshman season was quickly coming to a close here at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. As with only three games left, we were sitting at a perfect 9-0, ranked number fourth in the country. And thanks to my great play, I had not only led us to an undefeated record, but I was also the front runner for the Heisman. Game number 10 for us was a winnable matchup going up against Indiana at home. And just to make sure I made it to the end of the season, I ended up getting a boost to both my stamina and injury, which hopefully making it to the end of the season without an injury means I can set the NCAA record for passing touchdowns in a season. If I wanted to do that though, I was going to have to average about five touchdown passes a game. So I had to go right to work on offense on our opening possession against Indiana today, and it wouldn't take long for me to get my first touchdown pass to James Brown. Indiana had managed to tie it up on their next possession as we were now nearing the end of the first quarter in this game. So I wanted to get my team the lead back and would help them by making an athletic play by avoiding the sack, going on the run, and picking up the first down with my feet. We wouldn't be able to do much after that though as I would get sacked on third and 16 and after stalling out on that drive Indiana would go down the field and score to take the lead over us. Down by four we couldn't settle for a field goal this possession as we needed a touchdown and I would once again find James Brown in the end zone for our second of the day. Despite that our defense still hadn't been able to get a stop against Indiana and I would help them even more by throwing this interception but our defense would finally get a stop when we needed it and we still had a chance to score before halftime. With less than 20 seconds to go on our second play of this drive, I would find James Brown across the middle, and that would set up this first and 10 play where I would once again find him, this time in the end zone. That touchdown would give us the lead back over Indiana to start the second half today, and after having to punt on our first possession, we thankfully got a stop and would respond with a touchdown. We were only up by 10, and we needed to extend this lead even more, and so with a fourth and five to end the third quarter, coach decided to go for it, and we would pick it up no problem. The decision to go for it on fourth down would ultimately pay off for us as it would lead to a touchdown and we were now up 41 to 28 over Indiana. Even though we couldn't follow up that drive with a touchdown, we'd still hold off the Hoosiers. And even though this game shouldn't have been as close as it was for us, a win is still a win and I had the five touchdowns I needed this game. After that performance, I had enough skill points to upgrade my strength, elusiveness, and ball carrier vision. And being a 99 overall dual threat quarterback had helped lead our team to a perfect 10-0 record so far this season, where we had finally jumped up to number number two in the nation just behind number one Alabama. And not only was I still in the lead for the Heisman Award, but I was also projected to win the Maxwell Award, the Walter Camp Award, and the O'Brien Award this season. While our next game wasn't going to be the toughest, it was perhaps our biggest rivalry game of the year against Minnesota. And I needed another great performance this week if I wanted to stay on track for setting the NCAA record this year. My team was facing a three and out on our first possession, but thankfully I would find Steven Jean for a first down who would break a couple tackles and pick up a big game. We were backed up to another third down as we were inside the red zone and that would almost be picked off. And we would end up missing a field goal so it was still tied 0-0 here with Minnesota and we needed to get something going. On first and 10 from the 35, I'd drop back and find Johnny McRae who would slip one tackle and take this into the end zone as we would strike first over our rivals Minnesota and we would go right back to Steven Jean this time along the right sideline who would slip one tackle and take this for another touchdown touchdown, but this time Minnesota would respond as they would get a touchdown of their own, but we were marching down the field as I would find Johnny McRae on a quick slant route, but unfortunately it would still be a seven point game as we were looking to extend this to a two possession game as we'd be down at the two yard line and I would feel the pressure coming, running around outside of the pocket to the end zone, and James Brown would secure that for another touchdown as we'd be up 28 to 14 headed into the second half over Minnesota, and we would get off to a hot start with a touchdown in the third quarter, but this is where things started going bad for us as I would throw an interception right before the end of the third quarter, and Minnesota would end up tying it up at 35 apiece, and I would throw another interception deep inside Gopher territory. Thankfully, our defense would get a big time stop, and I would help our team march down the field into field goal range, as we would be backed up to a third and four with less than a minute to go, but we could not get into the end zone, but thankfully, we would get a field goal and a defensive stop and our fans could breathe a sigh of relief in this game as we would end up walking away with a victory over Minnesota and Paul Bunyan's axe was coming home with us to Madison. Despite that close call against the Golden Gophers, we still remained at number two in the country and while we hadn't clinched our division yet, a win this week could do that for us as we were taking on 3-8 Penn State who hasn't won a single Big Ten Conference game yet this year. We would get not one, not two, but three attribute upgrades headed into our final regular season game. 
game. And so hopefully they would pay off and could help me win this game and lead my team to an undefeated regular season as we were getting things started off on the right foot. But on the very next possession, things had a chance to go wrong, but we would convert the third and 20 as I would get my team down the field and into the end zone once again. We were off to a quick start here against Penn State and looking to score for a third time in the first quarter. And we would do just that as I would find Darren Brown on a slant route. And headed into the second quarter now, we were up 21 to 14 but things weren't gonna go our way on this play as I would get hit as I throw and that would be an interception to Penn State's defense. And that had allowed the Nittany Lions to tie it up at 21 apiece. Thankfully on this play action, I would find James Brown in the end zone for a touchdown. And we had taken the lead back over Penn State 28 to 21 and I would try to make it 35 to 21 here, but I would be just short on that play. So I would connect with Johnny McRae as he would hold on to it for a touchdown and we would have one last chance here before the half to score again and that is exactly what we would do is I would find Steven Jean in the end zone with three seconds left and we would head into the second half with a 42 to 21 lead over the Penn State Nittany Lions. That lead was looking to grow as we were in the red zone and I would show off my wheels and get into the end zone on my feet as that 10 yard touchdown rush for myself would put us up 49 to 28 but I would throw my second interception of the day and because of that Penn State was fighting their way back back into this game and was only down 14. We needed to extend our lead and we would do just that right here as after that James Brown touchdown we would take a knee and we would finish our season undefeated against Penn State. My freshman regular season would come to an end as I threw for over 4,700 yards, 53 passing touchdowns and only 10 interceptions and headed into conference championship week I was still the front runner for the Heisman award as I was only six touchdown passes away from setting a new NCAA record and I would have a chance to set that record as my team would be taking on number eight Michigan State in the Big Ten Championship. It would be fantastic if I could win a Big Ten Championship as a freshman in my very first year of college football, but this was going to be one of the toughest games we had played all season, but we were off to a good start so far, as it wouldn't take long for me to find Tom Wright in the end zone for a touchdown, and after our defense would get a stop, we would be up 7-0 over Michigan State here nearing the end of the first quarter with a chance to make this a two possession game. That wasn't going to happen this drive though as I would make my first mistake of the night throwing an interception to the Spartans defense. But thankfully I had a short term memory and was able to put that behind me and would get my team down the field and into the end zone once again. Michigan State would tack on their first points in the night with a field goal so now we were looking to score one more time before halftime as I would show off my scrambling ability here rolling out to the right and I would take this one into the end zone on my feet. And being up 21 to 6 this game was starting to get out of hand as this perhaps would be the play of the night for me as I would go deep and find Darren Brown who would slip one tackle and would take this to the end zone for a touchdown and that play would give us a 22 point lead over number eight Michigan State which would extend to a 29 point lead as all we would have to do after that would be run out the clock here against the Spartans and I had officially helped my team win the Big Ten Championship as a true freshman. That win over Michigan State would bump us up to number one in the country and would help secure ourselves a spot in the national championship against undefeated number two Alabama. This game was in the rain and it was not off to a good start as I would almost turn over the ball but thankfully we'd recover and after our defense would stop Alabama on their first drive we had to go to work now. I would get my team down inside the 10 yard line and instead of passing it I would run it in for our first touchdown of the night but Alabama would respond with a touchdown of their own so we had to get back down in the red zone and I would connect with Corey Roberts for our second touchdown of the night. Our defense would come up with another stop against this elite Alabama offense and we had a chance to extend this lead to two possessions as there was just over two minutes to go in counting in the first half here as I would roll out to the right and throw on the run across my body to the middle of the field and we would get a huge pickup down inside the 10 and we would be able to cap this drive off as I would find Johnny McRae in the flats who would fight his way into the end zone and our defense would give us one last chance here to score before halftime but I would make the mistake 
mistake of running the ball instead of throwing it away, as we would have to use our last timeout and settle for a field goal instead of a touchdown. Our first drive of the second half would stall out after that incomplete pass, but we'd get another chance here, as I would get us down inside the five yard line, and on first and goal, I would rush it in for my second rushing touchdown of the night. Everything that could go our way was going our way so far in this game, as I would find my reliable tight end James Brown for another touchdown. Our lead was big enough now at this point that all we had to do was keep picking up first downs and running out the clock, as our drive would eventually stall out, but we would kick one last field goal to end the game, as we had officially done it as a freshman. We had led our Badgers to an undefeated season and a national championship title, and I had earned player of the game in the process. But after that game, that is where my playing career would end, as I would make the shocking announcement of my retirement to the media, and I would return back home to DeKalb, where I would take the head coaching job at my local high school. But of course, we know this isn't where my story is going to end. Tune in Tuesday night as we start our collegiate coaching career and see if we can find the same success as a coach as we did a player.